February is traditionally a month where a lot of people experience the winter blues. And sometimes it's because they have seasonal affective disorder. And sometimes it's just because they feel so overwhelmed and burnt out from all of the physical and mental, emotional, and even financial stress after the holidays and the winter. And sometimes it's just because it's so overcast and gloomy outside and it just feels like the winter is maybe never, never gonna end. Creativity and productivity can really slow down and almost come to a complete stop even around this time. And that can be really hard on people who especially have to be creative by trade in order to survive, but also just on people in general. To, to lose that outlet and that connection with creativity can be extremely difficult. And to feel all this pressure to be productive but not have the motivation to do that can be really hard too. For those of you who it is a luxury to um, stop completely and just disconnect for a bit, it's okay to take a break. And if you don't wanna take a complete break, it's okay to find other ways to channel your creativity without making it something that's productive. So maybe instead of writing right now, it looks more like researching or reading other people's writing. Or maybe it means making messy art that has no specific purpose. It could mean you're not actually making anything or actively doing anything other than collecting. So making a vision board or collecting paint swatches or fabric swatches or just things that you think are beautiful and inspiring and bring you joy without you having to have that pressure of, of making something out of it. Are you okay? Maybe it even just looks like taking a trip or going to a cafe or a little shop or a library that you've never been to and just simply observing and doing nothing more than that. Just taking it in. It can be hard spending so much time indoors if it's cold where you live, like it is here in Montreal. And something that I find really helpful is making the space that I'm in feel inviting. So creating sacred space, as I like to put it. And that just means making your home feel comfy and inviting and, and safe and cozy, or even just parts of your home if you don't have the energy to, to do the whole place, just focusing on little parts of your house or your apartment where you spend quality time. A few videos back, I talked about a nutrition client that I have who was trying to um, motivate herself to eat less in front of the television and more at her dining table. So she had cleared everything off the table that had nothing to do with eating. And she s had sewn some handmade placemats that were really cute and put vases on the table and flowers and just made her dining table feel like a really beautiful, romantic, I don't, part of a story or really like an illustration of, of something that she wanted to experience and that drew her to the table. If you spend a lot of time on your sofa reading or writing or watching television or snuggling your little animals, then maybe you want to clear off your coffee table and just make it really cozy and cute and put some candles or the books that you're reading or a few magazines or something like that there so that it feels like an inviting space. Same thing goes with the bedroom, especially because the bedroom is where you end end your, your day. We change the bedding, the duvet cover, depending usually on the season. So in the spring, we probably will have like lighter and more colorful bedding. And in the autumn, we have an orange bedspread that we put on the bed. And in the winter, it's darker, richer colors, like dark blues and greens and deep burgundies. If you have a bedside table, I know sometimes it's hard to keep them tidy because we we take off our jewelry and put it there. Maybe you take 
whatever was in your pockets and stick it there. So just having like a really cute dish or something to put those things in or just not putting them there at all and just reserving your bedside table for your reading lamp and your books or your alarm clock. I strongly recommend that you get rid of any chargers, cell phones, whatever tablets, devices that are sitting there. Just kick them out of your bedroom if you can. I just replaced my phone with a silent alarm clock. Silent meaning it doesn't tick and make noise. Well, I don't want it to. The alarm obviously makes noise, but um, yeah. And so to replace my phone so that I can get into the habit of leaving my phone out of the bedroom entirely when I go to bed at night. This way, when you go to bed at night, your bed is cozy and inviting and you're more likely to have a quality sleep that night. And the same thing goes for wherever you start your day in the morning. So whether that's the bathroom sink, if you do your hair and makeup and stuff first thing in the morning or the shower, your bathtub, um, maybe there's a corner in your house or your dining table that you sit and have your morning coffee, your tea and do your journaling or whatever your morning routine is. I think making sure that the space where you do you is really um, cozy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's birds outside. Hey, you're talking to the birds? Um, yes. So, oh, it can just make all the difference of how you start your day. That's what I'm trying to say, that your perspective um, starts on a positive note in the morning can set the tone for the rest of your day. I know it's really difficult to do for a lot of people at this time of year, but if it's at all possible to get outside, I highly recommend it. I have a hard time with this right now, especially because I'm still recovering from a broken ankle. So I don't have the balance, the stability or the strength um, to navigate the sidewalks if they're icy, slushy, snowy. But when the sidewalk is clear, I try and get out for a walk. This is new for me. It's very exciting. A few days ago, I walked probably the equivalent of almost four blocks. And <laughs> for a lot of you, I know that's not much, but it's the most I've walked uh, since early July. So I was very, very excited about it. If you like doing outdoor sports, like skating, skiing, stuff like that, definitely get outside, get some vitamin D, move your body. You always feel so much more energized after you do it, even though it feels really hard to get motivated in the first place. And if you don't like any of that stuff and you're not able to go for a walk, just go outside and fill up the bird feeder or get cozy with some blankets and just have a few sips of your tea outside and take some deep breaths and remember what the snow smells like and just take a mindful moment outside where there's some fresh air and hopefully a tiny bit of sunlight. Speaking of mindfulness, now's a really, really good time to practice that and just try and find joy in the things that you do like doing, even if you are stuck in the house doing them. Maybe that means inviting some friends over to stay inside with you and play some games or have a dinner or something. Maybe it means running a bubble bath, lighting some candles, listening to some music, getting curled up under a bunch of blankets on the couch and just camping out there and reading books or maybe even making popcorn and watching movies, whatever it is that you really enjoy doing. Being dehydrated can actually make you feel very sluggish and tired and even exhausted to the point where it's hard to keep your eyes open. So just check in with yourself also if you're feeling low energy to make sure that you're drinking enough. It's not always obvious in the winter. We often associate um, hydrating with hot weather and being out running around being super active, but the artificial heating can be really, really drying and the air can be very dry in the winter. So if you have a humidifier, Try using that. Like I said, drink plenty of water. You don't wanna drink water uh, when it's chilly out, then drink warm water with lemon or herbal teas. I drink tea pretty much all day long. Um, 
and your skin to make sure that you're hydrating your skin. You don't need fancy lotions and moisturizers and stuff. And honestly, most of them are full of fragrances and chemicals that you don't need. You can really just use a carrier oil with a few drops of essential oils, like um, calendula is great in the winter and so is sea buckthorn and rosemary. For a carrier oil, if you have oily skin and you're prone to blemishes, I would recommend something lighter like an, an apricot oil or a grapeseed oil. If you have average normal skin, then jojoba oil, almond oil should be nice. If you have much drier skin or more mature skin, I would definitely recommend a slightly heavier oil like an, an olive oil or um, avocado oil, even coconut oil. And of course, nourish yourself. We always, hi. <laughs> we often crave foods that are heavy in carbs and fats and rich creamy sauces during the winter months and that's totally fine. But there are plenty of delicious filling comfort foods that are also healthy for you. And I'm gonna show you one of them in just a second. One of my favorite go-to comfort dishes is a nut butter noodle dish with tempeh and green beans. I'll start by putting some soy sauce in a dish with some water as well as a bit of rice vinegar, some granulated garlic, some dried ginger and then I'll mix it up all together really really well and set it aside for at least 10 or 15 minutes to soften the dried ginger and garlic then I will put it in my Nutribullet and I will add some nut butter some almond butter to be exact <laughs> And I will also add a little bit of sesame oil. Some roughly chopped garlic. And just a bit of maple syrup to soften the acidity of the vinegar. And I will blend it really well for a few seconds and set it aside. Then I'll slice some tempeh into, well, I'll, I'll cut it into bite-sized cubes. I'm actually not a fan of tempeh. I'm very picky about how it has to be flavored and cooked, but I love it in this dish. I slice up a few green onions and I set those aside. And I also slice thinly a medium small yellow onion. To give you an idea of how thick or thin to slice them, just keep in mind that um, they're going to be sauteed with the green beans. I put some water on to boil for my ramen noodles and I warm up some olive oil in a nonstick pan. I add my tempeh cubes to the pan and saute them until they're golden brown, eight or nine minutes about. And then I add a couple of tablespoons of the nut butter sauce to the tempeh and cook that, stirring it pretty much the whole time as the sauce reduces and sort of caramelizes on the outside of the tempeh. Once all of the sauce has reduced, I will take the tempeh out of the pan, set it aside, wash the pan, and then heat up some more olive oil so I can saute my onions. And I will add my green beans to the onions and saute them until they're tender. I will also throw the ramen noodles into the water to cook for just a few minutes until the noodles are tender, but not soggy, so al dente. Once the green beans are tender, I will reintroduce the tempeh 
and just cook that a little bit longer until the tempeh is heated back up again. Then I will throw it all into a big bowl and I will add my cooked drained ramen noodles and most, but not all, of the nut butter sauce. I will combine all of these things until all of the green beans and noodles are really well coated with the sauce. I'll add the green onions and mix those in also. And then if I feel like the noodles are a bit too dry or could use more, I will add the rest of the nut butter sauce. And I will serve this up in a dish garnished with the leftover few green onion slices. This dish is so comforting. I love it so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. As always, it means so much to me. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that and enabling the notifications so that you know when there's new videos out. If you are a Patreon subscriber, I can't thank you enough for believing in the work that I'm doing and for helping to make this channel possible. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one for nutrition or naturopathy, there is a booking link in the description below. I will see you next week. And in the meantime, take really, really, really good care of yourselves. Bye.